In this two-part tutorial, you will learn how to model grasses and weeds by modeling a flowering wild garlic. During this project, we'll explore how to add randomness to parameters that do not have randomness built in, and we will work with dummy objects to control the distribution of instances. So let's jump right in. As always, we need to switch the scene to the correct unit in the Options panel before we start modeling. For grasses and weeds, centimeter is recommended. While we could create the leaves with alpha maps and use a lightweight leaf node for that, alpha maps slow down rendering drastically in any render engine when you have hundreds or thousands of instances in a scene. But nowadays, polygon count is much less of an issue than a few years ago, and almost every DCC app supports some form of instancing. So when the leaf shape allows for it, I prefer to use real geometry for grasses and weeds in favor of quicker rendering. That's why I recommend using blades for leaf creation with grasses and weeds. So let's add an advanced segment and rename it to leaf and then activate the blades option. First, we'll edit the stalk part of the node, so the cylinder of the advanced segment. The radius needs to be thin, so I'll go with 0.1. Wild garlic leaves are often between 20 and 30 centimeters in length, so I'll use a length value of 25 plus minus 5 centimeters. By going back to the radius and editing the orange curve, which controls the setting along the length of the segment, I'll also fade out the radius to zero centimeters after about a third of the segment's length. This creates a nice transition between the stalk and the leaf blade. The blades themselves should only start after a few millimeters, so let's set the start value to 0.08 plus minus 0 0.02. Now we'll use a really, really cool and very powerful feature. When we examine the length, we have a quite big variation between 20 and 30 centimeter. That's a third in length variation. To maintain a good ratio between the width and the length of the leaf, it would be great to instruct Plant Factory to pick a bigger value for width with a long leaf and a smaller value for width with a short leaf. And we can do this by doing a left click on the blade width setting, going to set randomness dependency and choosing the length parameter on the segment tab of the segment group. The setting now has a green outline, which means that its randomness depends on another setting in the node. So let's enter a value of 2.6 centimeters plus minus 0.5. So whenever Plant Factory now chooses a high random value for the length, it will also choose a high value for the width and vice versa. Again, this ensures that we maintain a proper ratio between the width and the length of the leaf while we still keep random variations. Theoretically, we could just have added randomness to the global scale of the node instead of randomizing the width and length separately, but adjusting the global scale would also affect the diameter of the stock and we don't want the stock to be affected at all and the current solution allows us to just randomize the blade itself and leave the stalk untouched. So to finally create the leaf shape out of the blade, we need to edit the blade's profile filter. With a curve that starts and ends at zero, we achieve a nice rounded leaf with a pointed tip. Next, we will deform the segment. Because the blades grow out from the stalk 
every deformation that affects the axis that runs through the stalk segment will also be carried over to the blades and add detail to them if the follow axis option is checked. When this option is unchecked, procedural deformations are not considered for blades and will only be applied to the cylindrical form of the node. So on the influences tab, a slight axis perturbation of 0.3 plus minus 0.2 creates some nice variation. The noise itself is too small though, so let's decrease the frequency to 0.3, which smooths out the deformation. Additionally, I would like to reduce the deformation strength along the y-axis. This is what the make planar setting does. So at zero, the axis perturbation is equally strong along x, so right and left, and along y, back and forth. By going to minus one, the deformation is fully removed from the y-axis, and at one, it is fully removed from the x-axis. I'll go with something in between with minus 0.65 to keep just some slight deformation along y. Also, I do not want the tip of the stalk to be affected by the deformation, so I'll set keep tip to the maximum strength of 1. Next, let's curl the stalk by adding a curl bias. Because the plant will have more than one leaf, we need to curl each leaf individually in its local direction, which is along the y-axis. A strength of 0.6 plus minus 0.2 works well, and I'll also use the orange curve to reduce the curl strength at the tip of the stalk and the leaf to something around 0.36. Before we continue with more biases, we should first add more leaf instances so that we get a better representation of the full plant and of all the different force randomizations that we're adding in the next steps. So let's add a hydro node to the scene and connect the leaf to the hydro node. We only need four leaves for a wild garlic. The leaves are too far away from each other, so let's decrease the radius to a value around 0.5 plus minus 0.2. The leaves are lying flat on the ground, so we need to rotate them by about 90 degrees. I'll go with 95 plus minus 10. Now when we zoom onto the beginning of the stalks, we see that they overlap each other. Currently each stalk is rotated towards the next one and we need to rotate them away from each other and we can do that by using angle 2 and this makes them face away from each other when we use a rotation angle of 180 degrees plus minus a variation of 5 degrees. And finally, let's also add some random rotation to each leaf around the c-axis by using a variation of 30 degrees for angle 3. So now let's go back to the influences tab of the leaf and add a direction bias. We will use this to force the tip of the leaves a bit more towards the ground and this corresponds to a negative force direction along the world z-axis. So I'll enter minus 1 for a C. Again, I want the tip to be affected the most, so I'll decrease the strength at the beginning of the leaf with the orange filter to about 0.13%. And let's add some variation to the strength of 0.4 plus minus 0.3. And finally, let's add some twist with a twist bias with a strength of 0 plus minus 0 0.2. We will now add depth to the leaves with the section filter in the blade group. So we want the filter to cover the entire width of the blade, so we need to change the blade style to full width, and then we can edit the filter. 
So the leaf should have a rounded shape with a slight dip in the middle. So we need a control point in the middle and two more to the sides of the new control point. And I'll move the right and left control points slightly down. And when I now change the filter type from linear to curve, we get a rounded leaf shape with a rib in the center. To really see the effect, we need to increase the strength of the section filter with the section height parameter. I'll go with 2.6 plus minus 0.3. Okay, so far so good. But what if we wanted to give each leaf instance a different section filter? Well, here's a golden rule for any project in Plant Factory. If you want to randomize a parameter that does not have randomization built in, simply recreate the setting with extra nodes and connect the result to the original parameter. I'll first copy the filter shape and next I'll do a left click on the settings name and choose connect parameter. This will now rebuild the setting with external nodes. And by the way, this is a really great learning resource to understand how each parameter works internally in Plant Factory. So the section parameter consists of a radial node that feeds a filter, which contains the section shape. So we could now either copy and paste the filter node and change the shape in each filter and then add another node that switches randomly between all the filter copies. Or we could add the multi-curve node from the miscellaneous category, which combines all of this functionality in a single node. When we edit the multi-curve, the editor looks like the regular filter editor, except for the second probabilities tab. Here we can add as many individual filters as we want and indicate a probability between 0% and 100% for how likely Plant Factory will choose each filter. So let's paste the filter that we copied into the first slot and then add a second filter. Again, I'll copy the existing filter into the second slot and then edit the filter. Here I want the left side of the leaf to go up instead of down. Next, I'll add a filter where both sides go up. So again, let's copy paste the existing filter and then let's edit the filter and move both control points accordingly. For the next filter, I want the right side to go up and the left side to go down. And the round shape should be more pronounced than in the other filters. The next filter is the exact opposite. So the left side will go up and the right side will go down. We can do this quickly by simply mirroring the existing filter. And finally, I'll add the default filter again and exaggerate the round shape in this default filter. For all the newly added filters, I want the probability to be around 50% so that our default shape is twice as likely to be chosen than all the other shapes. Okay, so let's now close the editor and connect the multi-curve to the radial input and then to the leaf node which we need to unfold to find the correct input. And when we now create new random variations each leaf will have a different section shape. Now we just need to add materials, which you can download from the link in the video description. In the input node of the graph, we'll load the stock material from the content browser. And inside of the stock group on the materials tab of our leaf node, 
let's check parametric so that the material scales with the length of the stalk and is not repeated when the length changes. And for the leaves, we'll load a new material in the blades group and select the leaf material in the content browser. Again, we need to check parametric for the leaf to avoid any tiling or repetition. By the way, this is a two-sided PPR material which has a different color on the front and the back. The wild garlic leaves are now finished and even without the blossom, it's already a really great looking weed that's worth saving to your library for later use. In the next video, we will add the blossom and learn more about using dummy objects.